My name is Kelvin Watson. I am the executive director of the Las Vegas Clark County Library District. I've been here as director for a little over five months. The Las Vegas Clark County Library uh, District consists of 25 locations covering 8,000 square miles here in Southern Nevada. The changes that I made in my library system, specifically in the Broward County libraries before I came here to Las Vegas, was that we increased our cleaning staff. We also developed a schedule for the library staff so that they could actually participate in the, the cleaning of physical spaces. We also use plexiglass as, as other libraries uh, around the uh, country and, and retailers and others did as well. We began curbside service to our, uh, to our customers. What, what I'll say was, was unique about the Broward County libraries compared to Las Vegas, uh, Clark County Library District was Broward County libraries from March of 2020 through about November of 2020, we were not serving the customers inside the library, but we had all of the library staff reporting to work every day. And we were able to do our virtual programming while we were actually working. We did other projects that libraries don't specifically have an opportunity to do. So we inventoried all two million items in our collection. We focused on building up our, um, our virtual programming capacity by adding and, and buying new technology because we weren't traveling. So we used those funds to help build up our, our tech infrastructure. Here in Las Vegas, it was different. Um, the uh, staff were not reporting to work at all. Uh, they were paid and they were at home. Um, they did start doing some virtual programming. Um, so those were changes and the changes that we're still making, we still are requiring mask. Now that the changes continue to come down from the CDC, we continue to increase our cleaning, our cleaning of our facilities. We also have the air filtering here is as well, which is something we didn't have in Broward. And all of the library staff are considered essential workers. And so that's something different from Broward as well. So when I got here in February as the executive director, I actually was vaccinated. I took my first vaccination within two weeks. So I, you know, it was being offered essential workers. I was able to get an appointment and get it. So we actually we actually pay uh, people for the time that they take uh, the staff when they go take the vaccination. We actually pay them here in Las Vegas. So that's still uh, we're, we're still encouraging our, our staff to get vaccinated. We're encouraging the public uh, as well in a subtle way with our with our signage. And um, we we believe that even after um if there is an after uh, covid that we will continue to have increased cleaning of our facilities our work has changed we're looking at our spaces differently we're looking at how do we come back programmatically inside the library but also how do we continue to deliver virtual programming as well one of the things that we did in Broward, which was interesting, not knowing COVID, but we built our school relationship with digital library cards back in 2017. So when COVID happened, we didn't have all the students with a library card, but we had almost a third of the entire school district students with a library card. So nearly 90,000 students had a digital library card in Broward. So that made that usage of those e-resources and that accessibility much easier. It was, you know, something we didn't have to work on and develop. So we had put a solution in place and that was to provide the students with that, the access to the public library resources 
in advance of COVID. And so the impacts that staff now have to focus on and myself included is how do we have these types of processes in place for the next COVID. What I've learned that can be useful to other libraries and museums is to continue to leverage our partnerships and collaborations. In the five months I've been here, we already have a partnership with our Regional Transit Commission to provide the library services to our commuters. We're also working closely with actually with our museum, the Children's Discovery Museum here in Las Vegas. So it's, it's those partnerships and collaborations that if, I, if I've learned anything or really maybe reiterated anything for me, it's been that I'm not in this alone. We're all in this together. We need to work together as a community. I need to continue to work with partners. Partners need to continue to work with me. And I've been to some of our most rural communities that have no, no access at all, little to no access. And so that's what I'm learning is that the, it's not just urban, it's rural. And that's something that really was um, an exponential issue for families and students during uh during this past year and a half it's been here but it really came to the forefront during during COVID that the the access the discovery and the delivery of library resources one of the things that i focused on probably for the past four plus years has been about transforming the libraries and library staff and transforming ourselves so that we could transform our services to the customers. So I think that the next steps are continuing on with that transformation. It's, it's thinking about and implementing the programs and services where our, our communities can and will continue to access the library on their own terms, whether that's coming into the physical space and or continuing to access the library virtually. So um, next steps is to continue to promote the library, push the libraries out, that we are continuing to serve our missions and deliver on our missions. And that is to support our communities through literacy and education and research and also entertainment. We all, if you want to get entertained, we have that as well. So. I think the next steps are to continue for libraries, continue on, continue to watch uh, what's happening, continue to be flexible and nid nimble and agile, uh, because that's going to be required. If we didn't learn anything for the past year and a half, that's something that we that we need to be.